Marvel Studios vies for the most obnoxious logo Oscar. And I hate to tell you this, Marvel, but you're going to get beat by Blumhouse. In case you confused it with Missouri Jupiter. Holy sh 1980 Kurt Russell effects are pretty amazing. Took me at least 20 seconds to figure out I wasn't watching used cars. But sin for making me think I was watching used cars. Dairy Queen product placement is so ridiculous and obvious it should be in Wayne's World. I guess these letters and numbers are some sort of coordinates, which just like latitude and longitude, I don't f***ing need. Also, how in the name of math could this many planets be clustered up together like this? As if to remind us that Peter Quill is from 1980s Earth, Peter uses an electronic football game machine as a portable radar of some sort. Two questions. How did Peter take so many items with him when he got abducted in 1988? And why the f*** would he need to hack into this electronic football game to create a radar? Aww, I can't be mad at this movie now. Look how cute Groot is! And this opening dance with all the mayhem going on around it is so fun. Damn it, you put me in a good mood, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But also, Groot will later prove to be super helpful in battle, even while tiny. So this opening scene just makes him look like a selfish dick. By the way, all the characters fighting this alien survive stuff like this. In the middle of this fight, Rocket sees Baby Groot almost eat an insect and decides to tear himself away from the way more important action to stop him. And how did he even see that bug anyway? <laughs> me? Isn't Drax just like a big dude with no special powers? How the f*** does he jump this high and far? Also, in this hero purposely gets swallowed by a monster cliche, I've gotta wonder, why don't the monster's stomach acids kill these people? There is a cut on its neck! And what caused this cut on the monster's impenetrable skin? Video game designer? Also, if the alien's skin is tough, why does a sword suddenly slice through him, even with the cut? It's not like the skin underneath the cut is suddenly weak because the cut exists. We could not risk the lives of our own sovereign citizens. Every citizen is born exactly as designed by the community. She just went from regular dialogue to expositional nonsense with no warning. I see it within you. An unorthodox genealogy. Guardians are hired by a race of people that can read into his lineage just by looking at him. A topic that just so happens to be extremely important to the story. How have they not lost his ass at this point? Even by accident. That's funny. We can make Kurt Russell look 29, but we can't make a space confrontation look unlike Titan AE. Our heroes are now being attacked by the Sovereign, who hired them for that job they just completed. All because Rocket stole something. And my point is that none of this f***ing matters. This is all just noise until we get to the Kurt Russell stuff. This could literally be any attacking fleet right now, and it wouldn't matter. It could be the Klingons, and most of us wouldn't even bat an eye. Space battle, yay! We're not killing anyone. All those ships are remotely piloted. Wait a f***ing minute. Didn't they hire the Guardians to kill the space monster we saw in the opening credits? And didn't the High Priestess say... We could not risk the lives of our own. So how would they have risked the lives of their own citizens if they use remotely piloted ships? We hired them and they steal from us. It is heresy of the highest order. Technically speaking, heresy is a belief or opinion contrary to orthodox religious, especially Christian doctrine. Basic stealing doesn't seem to be covered here. Can't you just call it theft? Fire with the intent to kill. The f*** have they been doing, eh? Firing with the intent to miss? To make it through that, you'd have to be the greatest pilot in the universe. Taking a look at this asteroid field, you'd also need extensive Battletoads experience. Find a luck dragon and watch the Empire Strikes Back asteroid field sequence more than 50 times for pointers, and you'd still die from this. I have famously huge turds. We're about to die, and this is what we're discussing? Gamora would be amazing at CinemaSins. Also, how is this ship configured where two people can pilot the goddamn thing at the same time? They went around the field! If there are still hundreds of ships ready to shoot down the Milano, how come everybody was crowded around Zylac a minute ago, as if he was their last chance to shoot it down? Also, look at this f***ery. How is the ship not freaking go exploded? <laughs> Literal day of sex machina. I know Gamora's a badass, and I have no question of her skills. But there is no f***ing way she's holding on to this spool and heavy-ass Drax while the ship crashes. Once again, the Starship Enterprise crash lands through a bunch of trees and... Oh, you're telling me this isn't the Starship Enterprise, but a ripoff of all the Starship Enterprise crashes that have occurred in all 48 movies? Okay, still a sin. Drax comically slams into trees and doesn't comically die. We almost died because of your arrogance. More like because he stole Anulac's batteries. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm 100% with Peter Quill on this one. After all these years, I've found you. And just in time to save the day, too. What are the odds? Appears that Biff Tannen from Back to the Future 2 joined forces with Joker from The Killing Joke to create a city for this movie. Guardians series continues to push Howard the Duck at us without an apology. Hey, you're out of luck until you've gone duck. You're lonely now until you've gone cow. You're stuck here until you've gone full deer. You're a masturbator until you go gator. Hey, Marvel, do you not have enough characters in these things? Avengers Infinity War already has infinity actors in it. It promises to be the No Man's Sky of movies. In 15 years, we'll be buying tickets to save Chris Evans because he's stuck in a deleted scene multiverse. Ender's game technology will be added to the reclining seats at your local movie theater. I mean, Jesus. But you'll never hear the horns of freedom when you die, young dude. I think it's pretty hilarious that this group race club of Ravagers has a super strict moral code. I also find the horns of freedom to be hilarious, but most hilarious is this obvious foreshadowing of Yondu's death. 
You broke all our hearts. Guardians of the Godfather 2. Sovereigns decide to travel all the way to a remote planet to propose a deal with Yondu, when I'm pretty sure a fucking phone call of some sort would do the trick. Do they have phone technology in space? Do they have to travel everywhere? Been together this whole time, you thought Yondu was my actual blood relative? You look exactly alike. One's blue! Man, everyone in this movie would be excellent at cinema sense. That is called a practical joke. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I just made it up. Somehow, against all odds, the former WWE personality has become the best thing about these movies. As a kid, I used to see all the other kids off playing catch with their dad and I... In the first movie, Peter Quill had mommy issues. In the sequel, he's got daddy issues. In the third one, it'll be trouble with the in-laws time. Basically, meet the parents in space. That's my point, Peter. What if this man is your Hasselhoff? This asshole shows up and says he's Quill's dad. Quill is immediately suspicious, but the usually guarded and skeptical Gamora is going to pull heartstrings and talk Quill into believing? If anything, based on the last movie, Quill should be stupidly ready for puppy love with his new daddy, and Gamora should be the one trying to talk some skeptical sense into him. Is this spray thing actually repairing the fucking ship? Magic metal and complex mechanics at your fingertips? I think if under oath, even James Gunn would admit this scene is only here because he desperately wanted a slow motion cool walk sequence and this was the best place he could find to put it. Certainly the tell Rocket what a dick he is moment just before this does nothing to lead into a cool slow-mo walk scene. After 20 plus years, Quill somehow still has the David Hasselhoff picture that was just mentioned one scene ago. This probably isn't as impossible as the Walkman that still works, but it's pretty darn improbable. I can also alter emotions. To some extent. Yeah, like what? Like, say a screenwriter needs something to happen in their movie and they run into a wall. They invent my character to solve a problem, which will involve someone's emotions. Stuff like that. How in the name of math could all these Why is this movie so obsessed with cramming up-teen heavenly bodies into every space shot? I mean, granted, these booby traps end up being useful, but exactly how much ship repair time did Rocket waste setting all this shit up? There was that much work to do, why'd they leave only Rocket and Baby Groot? Huh? If Rocket was smart enough to set up booby traps for the Ravagers, why is he in any position to get seen or shot during the sequence? I put a tracer on your ship back there during the war over Xandar. Yeah, figures. Space tech allows for easy tracers, but not tracer detectors. We ain't stupid enough to help kill the Guardians of the Galaxy! This feels like something that could have been discussed a lot earlier. If Yondu was so sure his crew would accept the quarter million for the batteries, then why didn't he just say so from the very beginning? <laughs> No one will be seated during the yellow submarine portion of the movie. It was with Meredith that I first experienced love. I have so many questions about this 3D display that aids Ego's story. Like, is this a simulation by a computer? Is it Ego's thoughts? Either way you slice it, why did the characters look like wax models? I like this better than holograms for sure, but it seems like Ego could do better than this. And when I heard of a man from Earth who held an infinity stone in his hand without dying, I knew you must be the son of the woman I love. So why did it take until just before Quill got shot down by the Sovereign for you to find him? Also, Ego completely glosses over the teamwork portion of the first movie's Infinity Stone survival scene. It takes a long ass time for this guy to die in space, and I'm pretty sure everyone from Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson to Tim Robbins in Mission to Mars would tell you his death would be near instantaneous. I am not as easy a mark as an old man without his magic stick or a talking woodland beast. Give me Nebula one-on-one -on -one or even one-on-five of these guys, but she is surrounded. What the hell are they waiting for? Doesn't she have a bounty on her head too? Look, if everything on Ego's planet is going to be plastic and wax looking, you might as well take me to Madame to to, to you know, the wax museum that I'm thinking of. 42nd Street in Manhattan, next to the AMC Empire and the McDonald's, that thing. My mother told everyone my father was from the stars. It's like that movie, Starman? It was a John Carpenter film who worked a ton with Kurt Russell back in the day, but he put Jeff Bridges in the movie instead. I guess Kurt Russell finally got to play Starman. Take your brain to the center of this planet. Peter Quill doesn't respond with what? and gets this done on the first try, which is a sin. But thank God, because this movie still has over an hour left. And just like that movie has given Peter Quill his long sought after catch with dad moment. It's just instead of a baseball, they're using the soul of a planet. Feel the dreams, eat your heart out. There's something I must tell you. But Gamora's opening a door will prevent me from telling you this very important thing until it's too late. He offered me a place with the Ravagers. Said all I needed to do was you like a professional asshole or what? Movie speaks directly to me and gets it 100% right. Groot, who previously was in a cage before the Ravagers started beating him up and throwing alcohol on him, is allowed to walk around the ship because everybody got super drunk, I guess. And luckily, he Charlie Brown walks to the exact area of the ship where Rocket and Yondu are. Quick side note, but why do these Ravagers all sleep together? Also, why was no one put on watch this little tree motherfucker duty overnight? Groot cuts off some dude's toe without him feeling it. I guess when Ravagers drink, they drink the top shelf blackout stuff that allows you to lose limbs without pain. 
I'm Groot. He hates ads. I'm Groot. On anyone, not just himself. Maybe this is part of the joke, but if Rocket can understand Groot like this, and Groot can understand Rocket, then how the f*** is he not getting the message about Yondu's fit? That ain't it. Director's brother Ex Machina? Gotta admit, this Yondu arrow scene is pretty awesome. Funny and entertaining. Good stuff. Worth a sin off. Baby Groot kicks ass here, despite having gone the entire movie not kicking any ass. Why is there any tension in this goddamn movie? Jesus, this is a lightsaber cross with a Patronus charm meets Lembaspret. Somehow Yondu missed Taserface during his whistling spree, despite the fact that he's killed more people than was originally shown on the ship. This piece of the ship doesn't explode, because I guess the movie told it not to. It ain't healthy for a mammalian body to hop more than 50 jumps at a time! We're about to do 700! So you guys should totally die doing this, right? It should do way more to you than comic face distortion, right? Is Groot my million? Dance with me. Christ, this movie runs in place while Peter and the gang are on the ego planet. Sure, there are some fun moments here and there, but I just end up remembering the Avengers going to Hawkeye's farm in Age of Ultron. I finally found my family, don't you understand that? She should, since she's the one that pushed you to come here before suddenly doing a 180. Prometheus school of goddammit, if she just run towards the ship, she'd have eliminated about 80% of the bullet danger. I'm just saying. Is the ship's aiming computer faulty, or is she just really good at running? Is this ship seriously running into rocks and still moving? We were just trying to kill each other, but now I'm going to save you so our characters can reconcile cliché. <laughs> Look, we're in a movie that is a little bit more comedic than usual, but I'm about all out of f**ks to give when it comes to how many things these people survive. This isn't even an attempted humor, it's just people surviving an impossible explosion. Do not tell me what I want! I don't need to tell you what you wanted! Skip! Just once I'd like to see this asshole change the batteries in this thing, or show what kind of Mr. Fusion contraption he has up in this mug to keep it running. Brandy, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be. Jesus f***ing Christ, can we move the plot now? You played catch with him 25 minutes ago. Can we get to the f***ing point? I don't know if I've ever been simultaneously entertained and bored at the same time in one movie. Come with me. Oh, she knows something. It makes me worry about stuff and things. Imagine it being with you physically. Drax the whole Drax finds Mantis disgusting thing was funny the first couple times. Now we're just wasting more time. Why did the movie spend so long trying to make it seem like Kurt Russell was the good guy? All the stuff with Yondu was more than enough to tell you that Ego was not the father Peter was looking for. At that time, I was a Federal Express man. Stan Lee cameo tries to retroactively justify all Stan Lee cameos as The Watcher, which only makes all Stan Lee cameos that much more annoying. I know who you are, boy, because you're me. I'm glad this movie could work out so many daddy issues over this weird celestial tapestry. Fathers leave, no need to be a pussy. Not one of them carried the celestial genes. Until you, Peter. Out of the thousands of women he successfully got pregnant, Peter was the only one? I might be talking out of my ass here, but wouldn't a celestial gene be a dominant trait? Can someone do a Punnett Square and get back to me? You're right. We're family. Drax binge-watched the Fast and Furious movies prior to this mission. It broke my heart to put that tumor in her head. Why would you say this? You killed my mother! I Every mother one of these motherfuckers has a mom who not only dies tragically, it drives them. The Winter Soldier killed my mom. Martha, why did you say Martha? I tried so hard to find the form that best suited you. Movie's gag of casting the real Hasselhoff after all that talk of Peter loving Hasselhoff just ends up pulling me out of the movie, which was already so ludicrous as to be skating on thin suspension of disbelief ice to begin with. This is the scene. Knowing Kurt Russell, he just smashed the most priceless Walkman known to man in this shot. Out of the way, dumber, smaller group! <laughs> this spaceship has boat steering wheels. Well, once I figured out what happened to them other kids, I wasn't just gonna hand you over. Okay, so how did you find out about the other kids? You know what? Never mind. I think the real issue here is how lucky Peter was to have literally thousands of other kids get kidnapped before him, so that Yondu could finally figure out that those other kids were getting killed. <laughs> Okay, before Taserface died, he sent the Sovereign the coordinates for Yondu's ship. Coordinates that could only send them to where the explosion happened. After that, Rocket punched in the coordinates for the Ego Planet, a planet that took 700 jumps from those original coordinates. The Sovereign could have put their best trackers and blue-tick coon hounds on the trail, and they would have never found where Yondu's ship went in literally a million years. Movie asked, how many sudden ships do we need to show before it becomes overkill? Then answered that question with, three times more than you think. This is the problem with the Sovereign still lingering around in this movie, all for some batteries with almost no explanation of their importance. They bogged down a finale that could have been pretty simple and turned it into Jupiter ascending levels of noise and CGI battles. Thrilling climactic scene, but why does human Peter Quill need a space mask but Raccoon Rocket does not? Is there air? You don't know! Movie cuts away from this battle because even it knows how useless it is. 
Shut up and give me some tape! So later we find out nobody has any tape to mark the button Groot isn't supposed to press. But couldn't a lot of things mark this button? A magic marker? A felt pen! A f***ing magic marker! This is the second time this movie has tried to wring laughs entertainment out of showing us characters near the battle and fudging the actual battle in the background. This will be the second time the Sovereign has one tiny ship surrounded, shoots a million photon torpedoes at it, and somehow fails to bring it down. Meanwhile, all their ships get destroyed by a literal ex machina. The only thing missing from this shot is Scarlett Johansson cocking a gun. Damn, does Yondu's arrow ever suffer from wear and tear? What the f*** is that thing made out of? It says here... Yaka? Is that adamantium and vibranium? Rocket throws some round things that cling to Ego's tentacles, and the tentacles are ready to crush Rocket. But then a force field happens, because that's something Rocket has all of a sudden. And I have no idea what just happened. You saw it. I saw it. Gamora and Nebula crashed headfirst into a rock, and they're gonna live. I am Groot. What's that? He says, welcome to the frickin' Guardians of the Galaxy. And yet, telling him what button not to press is still a fucking ordeal. Okay. I seriously can't believe this movie comes down to a fist fight between a human and a planet. Does the movie not know how pixels this shit is? Also, you have two gods turning into huge rock monsters, and that's the result? They crash into each other and we're back to where we started? For fuck's sake. No! I mean, Yandu is mostly redeemed here in the sequel through sheer screenwriting. But let's be honest, he's still a dick, and Peter barely had any time to bond with him as anything other than a slave owner. Also, no. I sent word to Yandu's old Ravager buddies and told them what he did. I don't know, these guys were pretty adamant about Yandu breaking the code. Do they really think one sacrifice cleans up his record? And they just believed a rascally raccoon when he told them the story? I can't believe this movie's over and they didn't even put Tango and Cash in a scene together. What the f***? Sweet, another contraption that I should know about that makes comic book fans cream their jeans. They should turn these mid-credit and end-credit scenes into a YouTube channel. They'd clean the f*** up on dangling exclusive content full of gadgets and characters that nobody except the most dedicated fan cares about. There are four credit scenes in this thing. Five if you count the discount Yondu scene with Kraglin. They tack on more Stan Lee at the end, too. Enough's enough, Marvel. I'm gonna fight for my movie theater ushers here. You're going down, Marvel. You got nothing but a billion dollars and a crazed, devoted fan base. What does that get you? What, I ask you? Rocket doesn't have any photo of our spots! All of your work is done. Pedal to the metal, Commander. Maybe you just liked me when I was on my ass because it made you feel better about yourself. Where are you taking me? Come, Come, Wendy. Let us try to jump the hilly brush. I can't believe I fell in love with a space man. I love you, Jenny Hayden. Mutation. It is the key to our evolution. You people have issues. Well, of course I have issues. Peter Quill left Earth with so much stuff, it's a wonder he didn't think to grab some Nature Box snacks. Of course, he was abducted in 1988 and Nature Box didn't exist yet. And even the internet didn't really exist then the way we know it. But just go with me here. Just keep your mouth shut and just listen to what I'm gonna say. Who better to take advantage of delicious and healthy snacks than a space cowboy like Star-Lord? He's always on the go, fighting battles. He needs energy. By the power of Grayskull! Right now, if you go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins, you get 50% off your first order if you use the code SINS. That's a hot deal. In brief, things are hot, hot, hot. My new favorite is the cheddar and hatch chili crackers. Oh my god. Yeah! Not too spicy, super cheesy, just enough of both to be out of this world. Space. They ship to your door, replace any snack you don't like, and it's all delicious. Mm. <laughs> Just go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins and sign up today for 50% off your first order when you use the code SINS. That's a good deal. Great Scott! So go today. Don't delay. Snack away. How about I just go eat some hay? I can make things out of clay and lay by the bay. I just may. 